This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello, welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. It's your weekly dose of technology. And we are so excited! Yes, we were told that we need to banter more, in fact. I know. So, Isn't that funny? So what's new with you? Um, wedding planning, cats, and SDR radios. There you go. <laughs> Thanks for bringing it back. We got an awesome response from this STR uh, series that you've kind of embarked on here. Oh, good. I haven't read any of the, the feedback the yet. The journey of the... Don't, you have to eat everything I'm you... I'm sorry, God. Why? Because I'm really hungry. It's, 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 I'm really hungry right show. now. Meatball sub. Just I just introduced a new show called Coding 101, and I've been busy with that. Nice. Uh, that's about it. And then SDR. Nice. <laughs> oh, and then you're doing Hack Tip. Yes. So. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yep. Yay. So, so excited to bring that back. It's been oh, so fun. I'm doing NetCat on HackTip, so that's pretty exciting. Yeah, I've never learned how to use it before. You've got other cool but. bashy stuff coming up soon, too, so that's all good. Oh, I do? I guess so. Oh, all right. Right. Surprise! Yay! Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, we've got a great show for you guys uh, this week. We're actually talking to Richard Harmon. He's an awesome security researcher from the DC area because uh, I'm back from ShmooCon with all sorts of fun goodies from there, such as hacking snow. into USB controllers and snow. Yes, Ooh. there was snow. Ooh, that sounds fun. Yeah, it turns out USB controllers a lot more interesting than, I, I don't know, it's like suddenly... That's surprising. I just feel like the hardware hacking in the last several years has really like up its, its game. It's kind of taken off. Yeah, it's like everything has a bootloader. Everything's got a microcontroller yeah. that could be fuzzed in some weird way to do interesting <laughs> stuff, so why not? Well, that's exciting. I yeah. can't wait to see all the fun things that happen out of this. Well, I am doing my um, a little bit more about uh, SDR, but this time I'm delving into watching planes. Ooh, I love plane watching. Mm. In fact, I have a giant book at home for Ooh. all of the outlines of different planes. It's fun to be oh, able to really? Like, yeah, it's, it's fun to kind of be like, is that a 7.3 or is that an A330? Well, let's see. It's got a longer little tail thing. Airbus has got big butts. <laughs> You're such I'm a nerd. I'm just going to say. They do. <laughs> it's true. Well, that's cool. Yep. Well, what do you say we get right into the first segment? Cool. Well, let's throw to uh, a... Uh, and, and by the way, thank you guys for all understanding that when we do conference uh, coverage, it may look like we put people up against the wall. And that's because we do, because we try not to get <laughs> splash damage of like recording people in the background, because oh, that's, that's no true. good. We really respect everybody's privacy uh, at hacker cons. And so if it seems a little uh, weird, it's because it is, but it's because we respect your privacy. And so let's, uh, let's cut over to Richard Harmon with a little glass video um, about, uh, about fuzzing USB. So Richard, tell me, what got you interested in exploiting USB controllers? So I heard all of the stories about bad BIOS, and I wanted to actually understand what was possible and what was plausible. And I wanted to figure out just how possible it was for there actually to be some sort of virus that would transmit across USB drives. And if that wasn't possible, what actually was within the realm of possibility. So, I mean, typically when you talk about viruses transmitting over USB drives, people think about, you know, auto-run exploits or something like the ducky that would do a keyboard injection attack. Uh, but you're not talking about anything on that kind of user level. You're talking about something a little lower level. Can you kind of go into that? So, I haven't actually dipped into, di dived into the low-level assembly stuff. Um, I'm actually primarily focusing on how you can repurpose these thumb drives to do more interesting things. Um, I, ha I do have a couple of friends that are going to help me learn the assembly language that is used in the controllers, so maybe I can actually write some viruses that will exploit machines. So what have you found out about the actual controllers? Uh, what's the landscape look like? So it's basically an off-the-shelf uh, Intel 8051 microcontroller and then they just bolt on some things on top of it to do the flash memory storage or the USB controller uh, phi and uh, additional RAM and other things, uh, some mask ROM for uh, boot code and stuff like that. But it's basically a full-fledged microcontroller that speaks USB and then has additional storage bolted onto it. So the possibilities are out there for bad things to happen, and I just want to figure out how possible it is. So what tools and techniques are you currently looking at? So I've got a hardware sniffer and a software sniffer that I'm using. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I can reverse engineer the firmware that comes with the software that reprograms these controllers to see how I can leverage that and run my own code on them. So they can actually be reprogrammed straight from the bus? 
Absolutely. All, almost all of these USB flash drives have insert programming over USB. You don't need something complex like a JTAG programmer or an IC, ISP uh, programmer to just like pop a chip on. You can do it all straight over USB. And it, what, is it just going kind of like a bootloader mode where you can push code to it or something? Uh, it's basically an undocumented vendor command over the SCSI protocol over the USB mass storage commands. Um, the controller goes into a uh, programming mode, and then you just dump executable code at it. And the actual process for reprogramming the controllers first sends a burner file, and then actually sends the firmware for the controller. I haven't found what the distinction is between the two just yet, but I'm working on it. So when you first started looking into this, what were kind of your initial findings when you, you know, of course, go around the block and see what others have done? Um, I had seen other people using U3 drives, and those are highly specialized for you know, the CD-ROM auto-run stuff, but I hadn't seen someone who had actually documented and kind of told the world in a public setting, almost all of the drives that are out on the consumer market support these features. So I, I wanted to make sure that people understood that there are things that could be, you know, bad for people like forensic analysts, like how can I trust what I've recovered off of this drive is valid data for like a court case, or how can I keep my data secret and make it surreptitious to someone so that I know that my data is safe. And so how are you able to actually manipulate the drives? Using the proprietary vendor software um, that has been leaked uh, on various websites, through Russian websites or Chinese websites, um, there's probably something like 15 or 30 different manufacturers of these controller chips, and almost all of them have had their software in some version, recent versions or a couple versions old, that have been leaked to the public websites. And people are writing how-tos. It's just not quite as public knowledge as I had expected. And what was the kind of reaction that you got here at ShmooCon? I think it blew a lot of people's minds um, that they probably already have hardware that can do all this. Um, and how shocking it is that these things are chock full of features that aren't mentioned on the consumer packaging. Um, and it just opens up more possibilities for people to do cool things. So are you releasing proof of concept code or documentation? And how can other people find your research and kind of get involved and in, uh, in snooping around the USB bus? So I'm going to release the 1,000 word document uh, ShmooCon proceedings online. Uh, the slide deck will be online as well, and I'm going to have a blog post on my GitHub account. So that's werewolf.github.io, and I'll have all of the how-tos on how I learned how to do things, because a lot of it was trial and error, and there was a lot of flash drives that I bricked in the process of doing this. A lot of fuzzing? Yes, yes. Uh, a lot of clicking on boxes that I weren't sure what was going on. It's all like Chinese software? Uh, a lot of it is, Eng is in English. Um, not all of it is all uh, Chinese. There's usually some radio boxes between like Chinese and Korean and English. What was the moment when you downloaded the Chinese executable and you're like, sure, I'll click on that? I totally have a dedicated laptop that boots off of the network with iSCSI, so I can revert any changes if anything bad actually happened. But I am running antivirus, and so far nothing has flagged anything. Nice. Well, hey, thanks for sharing your research, and uh, I hope people can uh, get involved with your GitHub and follow you on Twitter. Where? Uh, my Twitter name is Zabian, X-A-B-E-A-N. Thanks so much, dude. Cheers. Thank you. You guys know it doesn't matter if you're an ADSB transponder or a TCAS receiver. When you have that killer idea, you need to snag yourself a domain name and web hosting fast. And with Domain.com's quick domain discovery system and their easy checkout process, you can have your website up in no time. I mean, I love Domain.com because they're affordable, they're reliable, they're easy to use, and they're huge on social media. You can tweet them at Domain.com and see what I mean. And the guys over at Domain.com, they're huge fans of Hack5. They want to hook us up. So get this, if you use the coupon code HACK5 when you check out, you're going to get an extra 15% off. When you think domain names, think domain.com. And now it is time for the trivia question of the week. Last week's trivia question was, and this was really easy, I know, the USB and USB cable stands for what? And the answer is universal serial bus. Surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> this week's question is, the first female computer programmers were called what? What was their nickname? You can answer that at hack5.org trivia for your chance to win some awesome Hack 5 goodies.